Hello everybody, welcome to season two of City Talk, episode one. Uh, this episode will be focusing on the players. I'd like to welcome Stephen Beatty, Garrod Marcy and Mark McNulty. Um, this episode is sponsored by the other three amigos, Cork City FC unofficial podcast. You can catch them on Twitter at the other three amigos. Um, the podcast is also brought to you in association with Red FM. Hello lads, welcome, how are things? Thanks, how are you, boy? Thanks, how are you, boy? All right, thanks, Oh, good, lads. Good. So, look, let's, let's dive straight into it. So, um, we'll kind of run through, look, touch a bit on last season, uh, a bit on the off-season, coming into this season, and uh, and, and talk about the, the series. Is going to focus on the, the season ahead. It's going to be a four-part series. This one, obviously, with the players. Next week, we'll focus on the women's academy teams and the amputee teams. After that, we'll hear from the board, and on the final episode, we'll hear from Colin just before the, the co Ramblers game. So, should be a good series ahead. Um, I suppose just kicking straight into it, um, probably more for Garrod and, and Mark. Just kind of the last time we had the, the podcast series was just before the season resumed uh, in 2020. We all know what happened with there with the um, change of manager, the team unfortunately getting relegated. From the players' perspective, how, how was last season for you and from that point on as well? And I suppose more for Garrod and Mark, as I said. I'd say, Chop, strive on there, you kid. Um, yeah, look, it was extremely difficult, um, especially look with the COVID and everything that happened. It was all stop start. We never really got momentum going. Um, you know, and then, you know, picking up a couple of bad results, we never really, you know, the season was cut back. You know, there wasn't as many games. Um, so, like, I know it hampered everyone, but really with us, because we were such a new, we were really such a new group, you know. So, it took, um, it was take, we, we could see that we were getting there, but probably, look, it just happened. Um, we didn't have enough time, um, I suppose, and uh, inevitably we got relegated. Like, um, so, look, it was a disaster from my point of view. Um, I suppose I was the captain last year, so I was gutted. Um, and I know everybody, all the other players were, and the rest of the staff were, like, you know, so um, it was extremely tough. But, look, it's um it's a lesson you know and like like this was the positive we we had extremely young group and all the lads who came through the academy it was really unfair on them and tough for them because they come into a team where um we sh- I suppose we should have had the luxury of you know uh breeding them in and uh getting them some game time when we're one or two up and coming on last 10 20 and you know just getting experience that way but we were really relied upon them like they were starting every week and you know there was pressure on them to perform and um, but like I said, I think the positive of that is that going forward now, all the young lads um, that didn't really have first team experience have now a year behind them in the Premier Division going forward um, into into this season, like in, in the first division. So um, I think that's the the biggest positive for everybody, um, and I think it's only going to put us in good stead going uh, going to try and compete and do well in in the first division. Yeah, because um, as everyone knows, the the season was practically cut in half last year, so. I know when Neil started out to start the last season, it was probably a bit of a project and, a, and a, something that he wanted to build on over the year, especially with such a new new group of players and especially a lot of young players. And then when that's cut in half and, you know, the first the first five games, I suppose, were a bit of a mixed bag. He had a you know, great win against Harps, uh, uh, lost the Shells, draw, and, and, and other defeats then to, to Rovers and, and Dundalk, which was, which was on a Friday and Monday. You know, very, very difficult start. And then you come back after that, you've 13 games and you're straight in, already in a relegation battle with a group of, of your very young players. I suppose, Mark, just to yourself, obviously there was a change of manager and you were involved in the kind of the management setup. I'm sure that was difficult. It's, it's, it's always difficult at a football club when that happens. But I suppose probably the thinking behind it was, you know, hopefully kind of get a bump going into the last couple of games. Unfortunately, it wasn't to wasn't to be, but um, how did you kind of see it yourself going towards the end of the year? Did you kind of, did you see, obviously it's very difficult, but kind of was it something that you were kind of building towards then for next year and that there maybe could have been a strong foundation put in place? Yeah, definitely. I think on behalf of, like say, on behalf of the club, I suppose it was a, it was a good appointment by bringing Colin Healy in, you know, um, especially when Neil had a lot of young players last year that, um, Colin Healy already knew um, and you know with Colin Healy bringing in John Cotter and 
towards the end of the season, they give the boys a taste of it and to see what they have and what they need to do. And, you know, the five or six games, even though we didn't stay up at the end, um, I thought performances did improve. Um, you could see what healers and Cots brought to the, to the group. And, you know, I think it was, like I said, it was brilliant for the club to appoint the two lads for this year because they already kind of had a head start, you know. And we've had, so far, we've had a great pre-season with the two lads. And, um, listen, I think things are, are looking up for the club and hopefully it's a good season for us. Definitely. And um, just bringing yourself in, Stephen, I suppose, look, it probably was a, as a, as a, a well-known Cork City fan, even when you weren't at the club, was it difficult to kind of look from afar and see what was going on? Um, yeah, I was watching the games and that, yeah, but it felt more sorry for the for the boys and that have been at the club for so long. You know what I mean? It's obviously, everyone involved at the club's staying there hard, but especially the boys that have been there and, you know, for the good times, but... So now, you know what I mean? It's over. It's finished with. You have to look forward. Obviously, the, from the biggest high to the biggest low in a couple of years, you know what I mean? So it's up to us now as a group to kind of get the club back up to where, where we need to be, and that's in the Premier League. And, you know, hopefully a year in the first division, learn from our mistakes and, and get back up. But it was tough to look in. And, and as I said, I've still got very good mates on the team. And I know they were hurt just as much as everyone else, the fans and the staff. And everyone knows the club. It's, it's a community club, so... It was felt all around the city. So, as I said, we'll try our best now to get us back up to, to, the, uh, to the Premier League. And uh, was that part of your thinking coming back to the club, Stephen? That that's something that you had in mind that you did want to kind of help, in, I suppose, in that rebuild and, and hopefully bring the club back to to a to a good point again, I suppose. But if I was coming back there, they always said I wanted to come back to Cork. Let's be honest, I didn't think it was going to be in the first division, and um, you know, but it's happened. Um, and then when I did sit down and talk to Colin that like it is a massive rebuilding project at the moment it's something I want to be a part of and as 32 year old come to the end of my career I want to try and help the young lads help most shops the boys that have been there you know we need that bit of experience and hopefully I can add to that and, and get the club back because I know it mean a lot to everyone involved with the, with the place you know it's, as I said it's such a community club the lads that no one sees and the officers, you know, the groundsmen, everybody just they're investing in the club. So it's definitely part of the reason why I want to bring it back and, and hopefully I can give my all on the pitch and get back on the pitch and, and do what I do and <coughs> along with the road notes and good experience bodies help the young guys through because it will be a tough season, you know, at the start. We're all the young squad there, you know, they got experience last year, but there's still gonna be some inexperience there. The good performance the other day against Rover, so we're need to build on that now and as I said kick on straight away for against Cove and then don't look back. Great stuff. And I suppose, look, don't want to dwell too much on last season, so we'll move on. Again, it's been a very kind of strange year, you know, with COVID and everything like that. And it's been a very strange couple of months, I suppose, with the club both on and off the pitch. Just kind of from your own uh, personal point of views, was it a bit of a difficult off season for Mark Garrod? And uh, I know it's a bit different for yourself, Stephen. You know when you uh, you were coming back from America, but from Garrod and Mark, was it a was it an uncertain off season? Uh, yeah, look, I suppose I won't go into it too much. Um, with everything that was going on with the takeover and was it happening? Was it not happening? Um, what uh, do you know? That from that point of view was very uncertain. We didn't really know what was happening. There was no no manager in place. Um, you know there was. Rumours of, look, we thought it was Colin for uh, a while, then it changed. We thought it might be somebody else. And um, we didn't know, there was no start there for the league announced. Um, there was loads loads of factors to it. Like, you know, you could go on about them. But um, so it was, it was, I suppose, summing up, it was very uncertain. And all you could do was really try to keep your head down and try and keep training. And, and look, uh, it, it was difficult because as a player, like, you know, you, you kind of, you compartmentalise your, your year or whatever, like to, okay, look, we're off there now, that's the off-season, we'll have two weeks of doing nothing, start picking it up then again, start going with the training and stuff, um, because you know when pre-season is about to start, but we didn't know when pre-season was starting and we didn't even know, like I said, when the league was starting, so that was probably the most difficult part and um, look, after after going through it all and uh, at the end of the day, it all worked out and look, we were, thankfully, we did we did all keep the head down, we all done our pro programs and you know we were we were all keeping ourselves busy and uh, keeping ourselves in good shape and just I suppose being optimistic about it and hoping that it it was all going to work out and thankfully look in the end it did and we are where we are right now and I think it's um it's hugely exciting there could be 
could be a really exciting uh, two, three years here in Old Cork City. Um, and I suppose it is a bit of a rebuild, but, you know, from when I first joined the club, you know, when Mark was there as well, uh, it's we're on such a, a better footing than what we were then, you know, in terms of like, you know, even, uh, what would you say, like uh, structures, you know, you have the, the, the academies, you know, you have the, you know, you have a, you have a solid fan base, you have the, 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 merchant, the merchandise side that you're involved in and, and all the rest of it, you know, so... Uh, I think we're we're starting off really well, even though it is a rebuild. I think we're ahead of where we were that time. So, um, I'd be I'd be hugely positive and optimistic for the next because we've been through it. You know, like I said, we've been through this this rebuild process before, and then um, now feels even there's a better feel about it now than there was then. And look, we end we know what happened that time. We ended up you know done all right the first year, won the, the first division, second year. And, so on and, and the rest is history and I ended up winning the Dublin the, the FA Cup and all the rest of it and good runs in Europe so I'd be hugely positive going forward um, into this season and Mark uh, I think you're into your uh, 57th season I think it is now so how are you feeling heading into this year what are, how, what are you looking to are you looking to kind of are you focusing on the coaching or playing or can you let us know no, to be fair, I'm feeling good. Um, I suppose like any player out there nowadays, even though we didn't know when our preseason was starting or whatever, I think um, every professional athlete looks after themselves, whether they know when they're back or not. You know, and I think to be fair, the squad we have, I think everyone had to be looking after themselves. You could see when they came in preseason, everyone was in good shape, and you know, um, as you say there about the coaching side of things, loving every bit of it. You know, being in the office with with Colin and and John Carter, it's it's a good experience. Um, but yeah, I'm still fit enough. I'm, I'm still ready to play. And obviously that depends on the manager. If, if Colin wants me to play, I'll play. If Colin wants me to stand and be a coach, I'll be a coach. I suppose just wait and see what happens at the start of the season. Yeah, exactly. And you touched on there, I suppose Colin coming in towards the, the end of last season um, with John Cotter. Um, I suppose it, it did bode well coming into this year that kind of a lot of the squad is very similar to what finished off last year, especially with the a lot of the younger Cork lads and stuff like that. And with, you know, Colin would have known a lot of them from the academy and also, I suppose, would have known yourselves as well through playing with yourselves and being involved in all other coaching setups with the first team before. It's probably made it a bit of an easier uh, adjustment, I'd say, has it? Yeah, I'd say it has definitely for Colin. Like, like, like I think, bar one or two, he knows every player that's in the squad. He knows what they're good at, what they're not good at, what to work on on the training pitch so for Colin I think it's um, like I said earlier it's a great appointment for the club to get Colin in and obviously it's a lot better for Colin to be in there and know everyone that's involved uh, and, he, and his team this year you know so um, no like I say uh, I think it bodes well for us this season I think we have a great young squad um, listen all those players that are there now have been given an opportunity it was like I suppose when I first really stepped on the scene in 2010 um, would I have got that chance if the club didn't go to first division? Possibly not. I took. I, I like to think I took my opportunity, took my chance, and won a lot of trophies and a lot of medals because I took my opportunity. And I suppose as the young lads coming in now, they have to look at that and see this as an opportunity for them. I suppose to build a name for themselves and you know hopefully be with Cork City for a long time and and, and win a lot of trophies. Great stuff. And and Stephen, I suppose coming back into pre season, how does it feel to be back at the club? Um, I know that uh, you were very excited about coming back and, and like you touched on earlier, you couldn't see yourself playing for another League of Ireland club, so it was great to get it done, I'm sure. And how are you settling them back in? Yeah, just the uncertainty as well. As Chop said, it was it was mad. Like, you know, you'd be talking to whoever in the club saying, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, then it doesn't happen, then you're frustrated. And just the way to get it all done and come back down and obviously back in with nuts and shots, it's, you're being back down to earth fairly quick. They're back to all for me the first day. Anyway, nothing's changed in the three, three or four years apart from nothing's gray hair. But yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's great. It's great. And as I said earlier, just the, the young lads we have, it's great for the likes of myself and Grohl and Mark to find that, you know, we're, we're happy about the experience side of it. We're going to need it so so much. So even the training, you know, training away, the lads are trying to slot them now, saying like, don't train, but I do. But yeah. Uh, no, it's even the sessions Colin and Cox put on, it's, it's, it's high intensity. Like Colin kind of coaches the way he plays, you know, it's all in, it's 100%. You no, know, you know, anyone slacking, you're found out, you know what I mean? So, yeah. sessions are all to tell you as well, the outfield players, it's been very good. Um, standard, you can see slowly the standard rising every week. Um, I think the sessions are getting better, and most point of view as well, you can see that. And 
the coaching hat, um, you know, definitely we're getting better. So we're only together really four weeks from, from full session. So you know, I was in the gym a lot as well. The lads are building up. Lads, you're getting really big arms. I'm not going to name names, but like everyone's, <laughs> kind of, like everyone's kind of filling out now, you know. So uh, now it's just, it's good. It's, it's an exciting time. It is an exciting time. It's, uh, as I said, it's totally different, obviously, from when I left. But it's a kind of challenge that I'm going to relish, I think. Um, and it's just uh, good, very good. Yeah, and uh, just a couple of things he touched on there. It's just, I suppose, uh, look, I suppose the majority of the squad is probably be after being built now uh, to this point. And there seems to be a good mix in the squad. Um, I suppose uh, experienced players like yourselves, um, probably players now who, who are kind of at a point that they really need to establish themselves and then sprinkle that in with kind of young up-and-coming players. Again, there seems to be a good kind of mix within the squad. Would, would I be right in saying that? Yeah, definitely, 100%. And, you know, they all want to learn, to be fair. It's like, the self and grow, the, the lads will pull us to the side and they'll be asking questions and stuff and they're constantly trying to learn and develop. And as an older, experienced player, that's all they can ask for, you know, lads buying in and you can see them in the gym, they're doing the extras and, you know, lads will be taking balls out after training and doing extra. And that's great to see for young now. But as, as Mo said earlier, it's, it's a great opportunity for them because there's not many places in the country that so many young players are going to get the chance to play and express themselves at that age. Um, so I think they're they're going to relish the opportunity. Um, but again, it's it's a weird setup because we we've got the young lads and then the older lads, and there's not many in between. We usually you'd have a your handful of your team. Or sorry, the majority of your team would be mid twenties, you know. So we kind of have that gap. So it's up to the young lads now to step up. I, I'm saying to them and training nonstop. I don't care what age you are. I want to hear you. Be vocal. If I'm if I'm not pulling me weight, slaughter me, slaughter girls. You know, obviously it's easy to slaughter Mark, but like you know, yeah, you just have to. I want. I don't care if you're 15, 16, 17, mm. or or 32. You know what I mean. You have to step up to the plate. The times now, we can't afford any pastures during the year. And um, it's going to be that sort of league. It's going to be tough every week. So it's up to to the three of us and and the other kind of experience there is just to drag us through and, and get us there. But there's a lot of good young quality there. There really is. So I'm happy out at the moment with it. Yeah, Garrod, it's something that we spoke about. Um, I think only yesterday. Um. You know how much you think that you know the the season really in the kind of it, it was a baptism of fire really for a lot of the kind of younger players and even though it was a really tough and difficult season and it, it didn't go the way any of us wanted, but it, you feel that it can really kind of stand them instead for the coming season. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, like when I like what notes was saying there earlier, like in twenty ten when. I like came on the scene as well. Um, I I probably wouldn't have gotten the team had they kept the players that they had, you know. So um, it was it was a blessing in disguise for me, you know. So I'm like I I I started every week and I was playing the first division. Then that carried on, you know. For you know what, you're you're twenty, you could be twenty two and you're established Premier Division player. Like so, um, the lads in our team now they have that opportunity. Um, so it's like like Beats is saying they have to they have to grab it and. Um, out of every conference, like we just saying there, every every week, I think you can see we're tightening up, we're getting better. Um, even the quiet lads in the group because they're younger and stuff. Um, they're getting more vocal, they're more confident. In the, the dressing room is getting rowdier. You know, there's there's fellas, uh, you know, getting each other going. Whereas if you if you went back, it, it, it wouldn't have happened. Like uh, even last season, it was you know it was a lot of lads wouldn't have spoke much and stuff. But I think. Like you were saying, that that see that baptism of fire in the in the Premier Division last year, um, it really brought them on. Like you know, and it, it's um, it's men's football, and I think that was that was really drummed into them last year. I think you know they, um, you know you, you're there's demands putting you, and you know that's just the way it is. You know, it's um, if you want to play at this level, you have to meet them demands, and there's demands every day. Like there's demands in training, and then you go into the game. There's demands from from everybody. You know, everybody watching the game. So. Um, I think, yeah, the last season, like we were saying yesterday, I think it's after kicking them on tempo. You know, there's even the Rovers game the other day, uh, a couple of the young lads there, like everybody was talking, uh, everybody was vocal, we were pulling each other around, we were tight, um, you know, and just, uh, th I think last year, if we went up the Rovers, went one down, um, would we have, would we have uh, got back in the game? I'm not so sure, like, whereas, this year, it, they seem to have come up another level. There's a bit we we've a bit more about us, I think, in terms of um, uh, resilience and just a bit of bounce back ability. And 
you know, just uh, just a bit of a bit of know how as well of just staying in the game, and that only comes with experience. So the fact that we've we've had a a really tough year last year, and like you know, them lessons, them really hard lessons, uh, everyone knows they're the best ones. So I think them um, they'll do they'll do only good going forward for us. Thanks very much, lads. So that brings an end to part one of episode one. Um, we were returning after the break to focus on how the pre-season games are going so far and the, the season ahead. And we'll also have some questions from fans. Um, thanks, lads. Welcome Cheers. back to part two of episode one of City Talk, um, the season ahead. Um, we are delighted to be sponsored by the other three amigos, Cork City FC unofficial podcast. Um, you can also catch them on Twitter at the other three amigos, and it's also brought you in association with Red FM. Um, so let's just pick it up where we kind of left off. I wanted to kind of chat to you about the the preseason game so far. Um, so we had two very difficult games from against two really good sides, St. Pat's <coughs> first. Um, um, last week and then again the other day against Shamrock Rovers. So it was let's start on the the same Pats game. Garrod, you actually played in that game yourself. Um, it, it was kind of a, looked like a difficult kind of for, first forty five minutes against a very good, experienced same Pat side who kind of who would have had a lot of players that were there from last year against yourselves who were kind of you know your first outing with again with a lot of kind of the new players and a new manager and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, look, it was very much uh, first game of a first preseason game. You know, um, I think, like you said, they've been together a few years. I think that was the only, for me. It was the only difference. They were just we were for the first five ten minutes. We were probably a bit. We were a bit all over. We you know we didn't really settle, and then um, you know they were at they got they got that goal that they got, and um, it was unfortunate. But like even from that Pat's game, that Pat's game to the Rovers game. The, the difference of you know how like that like that's what I'm saying it was very much a first game of the season like you know fellas just just getting going and getting used to uh, being on a pitch in a, in a proper game you know what I mean and from then to the Rovers game how much we tightened up and look there was there was huge positives from the the Pats game as well like you know but I just think there was lots of really good individual performances I suppose collectively we just didn't bring it together um but if you and then you know you go forward a week to the Rovers game we tightened it up everybody was a bit more relaxed a bit more used to playing. After after even only one game, like you know, there was there was a bit more um bit more confidence, you know, uh, like I said, fellas talking, pulling each other around. So um the the performance from even you can see there was massive improvement. Even though Pat's I thought was a good performance, you know, good outing for us because like you said, they're together. They're to, that that Pat's team is together a really long time, you know. So and then you go to the Rovers game. I thought we were excellent. Um you know uh, we. We, we possibly could have got a result out of the game had it, you know, we, we chopped and changed and we done a bit because pre-season game, you need to you need to give fellas minutes and, and all the rest of it, like, you know, so um, uh, it was re- going forward, look, we're building nicely into the pre-season, we've had two games and um, it's been excellent uh, and like Beast touched on earlier, the, I think um, there's a different intensity about us, like, uh, with uh, Colin and Koch, you know, the, the way they do things is everything is, um, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound, you, you, you're maxing out whatever you're doing, like, um, there's no going through the motions and uh, it's only right, you know, it's the way it should be. So I think um, that's um, that's really good for us and it's um, where, you know, we're up to tempo and we're getting there and as I said, we're building. So um, Waterford now on Saturday, you know, I think we're all really looking forward to that one now as well to to add to our pre-season and build on our momentum um, going into the season. Yeah, Mark, it was your own first outing in the season against... Um... Shamrock Rovers, uh, how did you, you obviously were at, was at the St. Pat's game as well, how did you find the, play, the difference in playing in that game and, you know, even stuff that you saw compared to the, the St. Pat's game because yeah. I wasn't at the game myself, but um, by all accounts, there was a lot of positives came from came from the game. Yeah, you look at the Pat's game, the Pat's game looked like a pure typical first pre-season game for, for, for everyone, I suppose, you know, it was like Garrod said, Pat's were together so long, they knew what to do, it was, you know, everything just flowed for them, I suppose. We're only just starting off as a young squad and it took a little bit of time. But as the game went on against Pats, we seemed to improve and, you know, we got ourselves back in the game. We were unlucky to lose 2-1 to Pats at the time. And then we carried on to Rovers. We thought we went up the Rovers. And as Garrow said earlier, we went, went one down after two minutes and other times maybe you might have folded or you might have, I don't know. But um, 
you know, we just kept doing what we what we were told to do with, by by Colin and Cox in the dressing room, and I think we put in a, an outstanding performance. Um, even though we lost the game two one, uh, when you look at the, the type of players Shamrock Rovers have, it's phenomenal to to watch them play and and to, to be on the same pitch as them. And like when you look at the young lads we had, probably the first time ever playing against these players and these players for Shamrock Rovers are all season pros and. So we put it up to them. Um, no doubt Shamrock Rovers knew they were in the game against us. And uh, like I said, I think they got the winner with two minutes to go. Um, obviously, we were disappointed to concede and, and lose the game 2-1. But at the end of the day, it's pre-season. It was about getting minutes under the belt and, and, and players performing. And Which I think uh, from the past game to the Rovers game, everyone has stepped it up a bit. And performances are looking better. And all we got to do now is build and get them results as well. Great stuff, and Stephen. Obviously, you're a spectator in both games, but did, did you see kind of positives? Are you looking to kind of get yourself going as well and get back into the games? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm playing 45 of the weekend against Waterford, so and as much as I was just uh, building the fitness up, to be honest with you. Are you? I've been such a. <laughs> Go on, I'll let you. <laughs> He's put himself in, is he? <laughs> oh, I don't think Colin and Cots know that, yeah. Go on, I'll let you. He's so, captain, uh, he's yeah, taking free before. kicks, throwings, penalties. <laughs> Four is really if they're up to there with the ghost bottom right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, just building up the fitness. Uh, 45 minutes now on Saturday against Warnford and then hopefully 6 plus 70 against Harps and then kick off the season. So just didn't want to rush too, too much back into it. It was coming off a bit of an injury and over the state. So, um, but as the boys that they both said, conceding so early, three or four minutes against Shamrock Rovers, for me as a new player, potentially coming back in, looking at that young group, to see them react the way they did and get a goal back within 10 or 15 minutes away in Pala is a testament to themselves, to the character, hopefully, that they have. Um, I know the gaffer was buzzing off it. It's a great trait to have where you're, you're going to fight and scrap and, and not throw the tail in. So, and for me and the road, I know that's great to see from the younger lads. It's brilliant. Um, and I thought they acquitted themselves very well. Um, you know, some really good performances. Gordon Walker was very good. You know, a couple of others. Keane Murphy, then you're up to him. So it's definitely a massive positive to build on now going forward, as the lad said, the Saturday, the following weekend, and then, and then kick on the season. Yeah, and um, I suppose looking ahead to the kind of final league game or the final friendly games before the season kicks off, um, as you said, Waterford this weekend, followed by Finn Harps the following weekend. I suppose, look, you'd kind of like to think that, you know, you've the kind of two, probably no disrespect to the other teams, but the two harder games over the way with St. Pat's and... and Shamrock Rovers very high flying kind of Premier League teams, but kind of coming into the games this weekend, you might be able to and the following week stamp your own kind of game on this and uh, you know like start um, start focusing on yourselves, I suppose, because I think maybe the first two games are probably a lot of work went into off the ball and stuff like that, and like you said, that while you go your shape, but you probably be able to kind of pose yourselves a bit more on the game this weekend. Yeah, definitely. I suppose when you look at when you're in the first division, I suppose the only good thing to come out with being in the first division is that in pre-season you get to play all the Premier Division teams, which yeah. is um, which is obviously brilliant for us because you're testing yourselves against the best players in this country. Um, well, I suppose when you're in the Premier, you're playing the first division teams with games you should probably should be winning. So for us, um, I think the four games are very good pre-season games. You know, um, it puts us. I, sp- I, I suppose it puts us in a in good stead for the start of the season. Um, Will we get to play a team as, as good as Shamrock Rovers again this season in the first division? No, I don't think so. You know, so if the players look at that performance against Shamrock Rovers and the, and the same Pats game, and I suppose looking forward to Waterford and the Finn Harps game, if we can put in performances against them, um, maybe pick up one or two results now in the next two games, um, you've got to be confident going into the into the start of next season. Yeah, and uh, I suppose that rolls us right into the beginning of the season. First game at home against Cove, you probably couldn't... Uh, Ask for a for a better fix, fixture for the league that we're in. It's just, it's just it's obviously a pity that there's there's going to be no crowds because I'm sure there would have been a, a bumper crowd for the start of the season and uh, especially with the Cove doing well the last couple of years as well. I'm sure it's a game you're look, really looking forward to. Garrods, um, I suppose it's a local derby. You know, I he kind of is there a one eye kind of on the Cove Rounders game already. Yeah, um, definitely it's um. I'm, you know, just me personally, like, I can't wait for it. I'm, I'm um, hugely excited about it and, you know, building into the pre-season. Um, like you say, you're, you're, you're doing your bits and you're, you're doing your play, getting your pre-season games, getting minutes under the belt, but it's 100%. Um, you can't help but look at that game, you know what I mean, and gear up and uh, 
I suppose, you know, get straight into it and uh, put down a marker for the season. And, you know, again, it's no better. Like, you know what I mean? It's it's great that it's cold because um, there's straight away, there's there's huge, um, it's a derby, uh, there's huge rivalry or, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're definitely out to, out to beat us and uh, we're out to beat them, you know? So, um, I think uh, it's going to be a great game and, uh, personally, and I know all the lads as well in the team. Everybody, uh, we can't wait for it, and uh, it should be it should be a great occasion. Like. Yeah, because it's it is going to be a very very difficult league this year in the first division. I think it's going to be probably one of the more competitive first divisions there has been in a lot of seasons. Like with ourselves, Cove, um, you know, Bray, Galway, Shells. It's going to be a very very difficult season. There's there really is no easy games. Uh, you know, the old cliche, but there's really not for the coming season. Stephen, is that kind of what you're, is that what you're looking to expect coming into the season? Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. I was, you see one or two bodies sign up for these teams and mm. you have a quick look, you don't really pay attention. But then when you actually look at the full squads on paper, like there's some very decent players gone to them teams you mentioned, you know. Uh, Shells obviously came down last from the Premier last year. Like, they'll be decent. They signed some good players, Kev O'Connor and that, Michael O'Connor, them boys. All experienced lads in the Prem. And, you know, Bray, Aaron Barry, that used to be with us, 2017, he's there. So it's obviously Caulfield at Galway. There's just going to be, it's good all around and it's good for the league. But, you know, it doesn't matter really who we play. We we fancy ourselves, to be honest with you. you, you we, we fancy ourselves in, in, in every game. And, yeah, it's great to pedal up for a neutral, but obviously we want to be going out winning every game and have a goal of getting back up. So, yeah, it's, uh, you just love obviously it's not we can do about it, but just the fans to be there for the for the cold game, the opening game, and try us on, and we all kick on from there. But it's like the stream will do, I suppose. But it's going to be an exciting game, and a lot of ex players from both sides, so it'll be a very interesting derby to say the least. Yeah, I suppose you touched on it. The stream is obviously a very positive kind of. It's very positive for the, I suppose, to all the leagues as a whole, but especially, you know, especially since fans can't get into the ground, they'll be able to see the games and even the first division games now being streamed this season. You know, it's a, it, it makes it, a, a, you know, it's not the same, but it kind of makes up for it in a little way. It's often to blow a beer for them, but at the end of the day, it's nothing like the real thing, is it? Um, just, it's frustrating for both sides, for the fans and the players, you know, like obviously we try off off the fans and the 12th man as they say and you know what I mean it's a stream on a computer I don't know what it's going to be like but again it's, I guess it's a little fix of hopefully get them back in the summer I think just talking about July maybe after the mid-season break and that would be great so at least we can give hopefully give them something to cheer about through a computer screen anyway at the weekend and, and we drive on from there um, fingers crossed anyway. yeah um, Garrod just to yourself um, look I suppose what would be the kind of the expectations or the goals coming into the season of the team? Um, you know, it's a kind of it's, have you set yourselves targets or expectations, or are you kind of going to take it each game as it comes? What are your thoughts as a team? I suppose. Um, yeah, look, obviously, you know, you want to you want to do as best you can do, but I think realistically, like even like you say, one eye on the core game and all that. I think number it's. Um, It'd be naive of us to be saying, look, we're going to do this, this and this and start throwing out claims and, and, and then you're, you're under pressure from the get-go. Whereas I think, um, especially the way, the way we are at the moment and the way we're, we're building into it, I think um, it's game by game, even, even now, like it's, it's the Waterford game and it's, you know, it's the Harps game and it's, it's into the Cove game. And, you know, I think it's, it's week by week because um, you really do need to, you need to have that level of focus that like, you can't be looking. I know it's it is a cliche, and everybody says it. Like you know what I mean. But like, you know, there's been times in in my career, or whatever, where we have done that. We've had we've been uh, adding up games and and looking looking two three games ahead. And I think it does you know favors. So I think um the best thing for us to do is what we're doing, which is day by day, game by game. Um you know um and I think you know before you know it, then you you have you have four or five games behind you, and you know you can you can reassess then and. Uh, you know, you can take from there, but definitely the way I would, the way I'd be looking at it, and I'd say the rest of the lads as well is is game by game because uh, you really do need to have a, give a hundred and ten percent to that game that's coming up, and you know the build up and your analysis, your do you know what I mean, the work you're going to do, you know, seeing how they'll play, how we'll play, and um, there's a lot goes into it. So I think uh, you'd be taking on, you be you'd be biting off more than you can chew if you were looking two three games down the line, um, and on the earlier point there, just with the first division, like I think. 
maybe I don't know if it, well for me for me it is but um, even for the neutral I think it's the first time in a long time that the first division is as anticipated yeah. as the Premier Division you know the lads I'm talking to which who are neutrals are just are saying like they're nearly more excited about the first division this year than the Premier because you know such there's such great teams even like you know even with, with managers with ex players with um, teams that we've we've rivalry with through playing them throughout the years and in, in the Premier Division and uh, I just think this year's first division is um is is going to be really good and uh, there's going to be a lot of bonus you know so I'm I'm really looking forward to it and I think the even like like we were saying even for the neutral I think um it's highly anticipated so I think that's uh, that's huge to have two two leagues that are you know it's not just all about the Premier I think this year the first division is is holding its own in terms of anticipation and excitement like yeah definitely and I suppose that's what comes with having big clubs in the first division you know, you, you do get sprinkled with premier quality players then which is going to board for a for a great league and uh, hopefully a great season ahead um, yeah. so thanks for that lads we're going to move on now to some questions for fans so the first couple of questions will be kind of directed at Ali and then some individual questions again so uh, Thomas McGee I know he's a, a body of few Thomas players. the legend yeah legend come on Thomas uh, um, so he the question there for all of you. Uh, what was your favourite game of the double winning season and why? I suppose all you can answer that. Maybe give us a quick quick answer on that. Start with you, Mark. Oof. Tough question. Um, I don't know. Do you know what? I suppose probably looking at the Derry game, the Nadal game uh, at home. You know, for so long people were waiting for us to get over the line and, and to win that league and. I suppose, you know, that game in Turner's Cross when half the stand was after being blown down the night before and right. you're thinking, oh, that game's not going to get ahead. Are we going to have to wait another week to win the league? And, um, you know, I, th- I suppose you'd have to look, even though it probably wasn't the best game to watch or, the, or anything like that, it's just yeah. a relief to get over the, the line and know you've won the league. And, yeah, the occasion itself, I, I'd probably have to go for that one. Mark, or, uh, sorry, Garrod? Yeah, look, I, it, like you said, it was... It was um, in terms of excitement and football and stuff, it wasn't the best game, but uh, it, it would be definitely the favourite because looking back now, they have like even now like at the time you, you take it for granted like the fans and all the rest of it like well full house um you know you go and win the game and the, the sense of relief was unbelievable and then you have all the fans coming onto the pitch you know you're hugging you're high fiving the way it should be um so expect especially now in uh with what has happened with the COVID and all the rest of it and the way it is now, um, that would be it, looking back at that in hindsight and thinking, geez, that was great to be on the pitch surrounded by everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody hugging, high-fiving and just celebrating together and uh, the sense of relief. So I would say, yeah, Thomas, that um, that Derry game would be would be the one. Yeah, Stephen? Uh, Give us something else. That's, yeah, that's me, <laughs> that's me second. Uh, nah, my me, me favourite would be the, the cup final, the penalties. Uh, after going behind an extra time as well to show yeah. character and that, because obviously when Shawnee left, we were getting slaughtered. Oh, one man team, right? Uh, you know what I mean? And they forget <laughs> there was eight on the team. But anyway, uh, to show the resilience, the boys weren't involved in any of the cup games. You know what I mean? So that was yeah. us that got us there. And then to go one down an extra time against the fantastic Dundalk team, to show the character to get an equalizer and then to score a penalty, most to make a save. Some other lad took an unbelievable penalty fourth, I think I took, but <laughs> for us to make the save and then for them or for us to go on and win to see Sad bury that penalty and then just a relief. And it was weird emotion because it was, like there was pent up anger there between the players that were left because mm-hmm. I think we did get disrespected a little bit uh, throughout the league that we didn't get the credit we deserved. And for to do it in that way, to go behind next extra time, I think was special. So that would probably be mine for sure. But uh, Thomas is a good lad, a great question. Yeah, he's a legend. Um, next question from Robert Barry uh, for each of you again. Who were your idols growing up uh, in a football sense and how did they influence your career? So we we'll start with you, Garo, at this time. Um, I'm like, uh, I'm not the biggest football fan in terms of watching games after games, but uh, I was, I remember watching like whenever I watched, like it could never captivate me basically. Like, you know, I'd rather be out on the road with the ball myself than in watching the TV, but like, um, I think once I started watching Zidane, uh, it was the only time I'd ever sit there and watch the whole game because it was just like, I couldn't believe, I was only young, like, but I couldn't believe how good he was and, uh, you know, 
the stuff he would do, like you know the, you know the, the turns and you know the cry for it out of the air and you know the volleys and the goals he scored. He had every, left, right foot. He had everything that you, you know, everything you you'd want to aspire to to be and do. Yeah. He had it all, like you know. And um, so you know you'd go and you'd watch you'd watch a few clips of Zidane there and you'd be out in the road doing you know just trying all the stuff he was trying. So. I would say he he would have been the one who influenced me the most in terms of um, you know, uh, superstars and fellas you'd you'd watch on the TV and stuff. Great, beats. Uh, probably like who I'd Roy Keane and then uh, Fat Ronaldo. Uh, like Roy Keane's work ethic, like obviously because I'm always smaller than that most other people. Like <laughs> I have that. I, I wasn't a jokey. <laughs> He's standing on a chair there, bitch. <laughs> Sorry, uh, <laughs> so, who, who was the who was the second one you said? Ronaldo. Pat Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Pat Ronaldo. Ronaldo. <laughs> 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 Sorry, these before these kids interrupt me again. Uh, Roy Keane for his work ethic and uh, R nine for just his finish and his, and his quality on the ball was was unbelievable. And I'd be like chops. I'd be going out down the street trying to. Implement what the boys be doing on the TV. Both is probably Bobby Charlton or something. <laughs> Some around the same age, isn't? <laughs> no, I, I suppose me looking as a kid growing up, you never look at goalkeepers. For me, back in the day, you never looked at goalkeepers. It was always as strikers, and I suppose as a as a Tottenham fan, I used to love watching Teddy Sheringham. Um, he scored serious goals, and we watched the documentary on him the other the other day as well. And, you know, anytime I used to watch him, watch him play, I used to get a bit buzz off it. Um, you know, I suppose being a goalkeeper now, um, as a young lad, I never really looked at any goalkeeper. It was always strikers, and because I think as a young lad, every young lad wants to be the main man, wants to be the goal, the goal scorer, the striker. And I suppose I was no different. It was Teddy Sheringham was my main man at the time. What 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 keepers would you look up to? I suppose even I suppose when you were younger, or or <laughs> I'm older than I'm old. <laughs> Shilton? Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Who I like watching? Who I like watching? now when I think he's very much underrated. <laughs> he's very much underrated. It would be uh, Peter like this one, Casper Schmeichel. Oh, yes. good. Not, not just, not just because, not just because of the name Casper, but uh, no, Casper Schmeichel. I think uh, what a keeper, and um, I think everyone talks about. Alisson, Ederson with Man City and Liverpool and all <coughs> this, but Casper Schmeichel for me is, is one, of the, one of the best keepers in the world. Definitely. Brilliant, brilliant. All right, so there's a question here up point in Mark. This is one for you again from Owen Donovan. The League of Ireland striker you feared the most throughout your career? Um, I suppose, you know, Pat Hoban. Did he score many goals against us? I don't know, but do you know what? To be fair to him, he had, he had everything. He had a strike. He was um, he was sharp in the box. He was good in the air. I suppose looking through, I suppose listen, they were our rivals for so many years, and do you know I hated playing against them. So listen, I'm gonna go for Pat Hoban. Good stuff. Beats. This one's for you from CCFC eighty one I on Instagram. How would you compare playing football you played abroad to here? Uh, in any particular country in America did it, did, Sorry, did, 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 did. that was so obviously coming like <laughs> Sorry, he's been all over the world he's, which country <laughs> here, which country are you picking up anyway I thought he said yeah. country not country um, no the standard over there wasn't great to be fair uh, the young young lads league like there'd be 17, 18 year olds going up to the MLS and that, but middle players and that would be great. So, like, obviously, the Prem, the top teams, the Prem would be way better. I haven't played in the first division yet, so I, I can't compare. Um, from training with the boys and that, they're probably better than the lads that are over there. It's a bit harsh to be fair the lads, but uh, it's, it's probably true. Like, technically, the Irish players would be better than the Americans. They're more athletes and, you know, they're lifting weights and can run quick and obviously. All that stuff. So no, probably here would be would be better. To be fair. Good stuff. Um, and the last one was for Garrod, um, from Cork City Rebels eighty four on Instagram. Again, favorite goal you scored for the club? Uh, my favorite goal. 
Um, I I the 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 goal the goal I scored in Harps that time got a lot of um traction I suppose and a lot of attention. But um, I suppose my favourite was the uh, my favourite was the um the the against Dundalk volley um yeah. into into the shed end um do you know just purely because the rivalry the the shed um do you know at the moment the time when I got it the rest of it so uh, I'd have to say that one yeah. He still have a question for Garo there. Yeah, fire away. Do you think he's still fuming over the door? Like, no, 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 come on, no, come on, no, Dora, no, give it to no, me. Obviously. What is do it? You you, do you think you should score more headers? <laughs> do I think I should? <laughs> yeah, because you have a massive advantage. Dees, how are you going to edit his chin out of the shadow behind him? <laughs> so that concludes uh, season two, episode one of City Talk, um, the players' episode. Thank you to Stephen Beakley, Garrod Marcy and Mark McNulty for joining me. Um, you can listen to the podcast on all your regular podcast apps and you can also catch it on our YouTube channel, Rebel Army TV. Um, thanks to the episode sponsors, the other three amigos, Cork City FC unofficial podcast. And you can also catch them on the other three amigos on Twitter. Um, they released their first uh, podcast yesterday, so head over to the channels and give it a listen. They're speaking about all things Cork City. Um, this is also brought to you in association with Red FM. Next week, we will be covering the academy, the women's and APUT teams. I'll be joined by Liam Kearney, Ronald Collins and Dara Collin. Uh, thank you for your listening to this episode. We'll see you next time. Also, don't forget to check out our fundraiser, the, the Fantasy Cheltenham. Go to fantasycheltenham.e. Um, it's 20 euro to enter. It's very simple. And make sure you select your club as Cork City FC. Thanks again. See you next time, folks. <laughs>